G'day everybody. During my recent explainer on the charge of murder as it related to the trial of Gable Tosti, I indicated that I was being very careful to try and avoid infringing the sub judice rule. That is, the rule against publishing things that may have an adverse effect on a trial. Well, I've now been asked to provide another explainer to explain that rule, and I'm happy to do so. I'm going to concentrate on the criminal law, but what I'm saying is just as applicable to civil cases where one person is suing another. Sub judice is Latin for under the judge or under judgment. And basically the rule is that while a matter is before the courts, it is a contempt of the court and therefore a crime to publish anything that might tend to interfere with justice being done in those proceedings. Why do we have the rule? Well, it comes back to two fundamental principles of law. First, in criminal matters, everyone is presumed innocent until the very moment they're declared by the court to be guilty. And so consistent with that principle, it's not acceptable to be publishing statements which regard a person as guilty and start paying for their blood, even if you believe wholeheartedly that they will be found guilty. In reality, that's for the court to decide and not for us outsiders to decide. Second, everyone is entitled to a fair trial. And that means a trial in the courtroom, not a trial by media. It means a trial decided on evidence, sworn evidence, complying with the rules of evidence and able to be cross-examined by the defendant, not a trial based on the opinions of Facebookers who get their views from what they see on TV. So how does the rule work? Well, there are three questions we need to ask. First, what do we mean by a matter being before the judge? Second, what do we mean by publishing? And third, what do we mean by material having a tendency to interfere with justice being done? Let's look at those one by one. First, a matter is before the judge from the moment a person is arrested until the moment the charges are dropped, the person is acquitted, or the person is found guilty. In fact, though, most professional media agencies start applying the sub judice rule even earlier than that, which is why they say a person is assisting police with inquiries rather than saying they're a suspect. But in any event, the sub judice period is way longer than the actual court proceedings. It may be many months between arrest and trial. And if there's a retrial because of some problem with the first trial, the sub judice period continues through the interval between the two trials. So basically, the sub judice period starts at the time of arrest and continues until they either walk free or they're found guilty. Second, what do we mean by publishing? Well, this is a bit that gets people into potential trouble. You publish something as soon as you make the statement known to others. So it goes way, way beyond publishing newspapers or magazines, way, way beyond broadcasting on TV. Your Facebook posts are all publications. Your tweets are all publications. If you share a Facebook post, then you've republished it and you're responsible for it in exactly the same way as the original author. In our current world, we have an unprecedented ability to publish, potentially to really wide audiences. And when a matter is sub judice, that can be incredibly dangerous to justice. There's a saying that says, dance like nobody's watching, post like it'll be read in court one day. And that's really good advice. Third though, and here's the really important bit, what do we mean by a tendency to interfere with justice? You see here, the courts have to walk a very fine line because on the one hand, those values I mentioned earlier, the presumption of innocence and a fair trial, they're really important. But by the same token, there are other principles. The principle of open justice, not secret justice. And the principle of free speech about matters of public interest. And these have to be taken into account. So the rule doesn't mean that any publication about a current trial is going to interfere with justice. It is, for example, perfectly okay to fairly report court proceedings. So media agencies are quite okay to tell the public what has happened in open court in front of the jury, unless the judge has specifically ruled that certain material should be suppressed. Second, it's perfectly okay to explain the law in general terms, in the way that I've done from time to time in my explainers. I'm very careful never to express an opinion about what facts the jury should consider to be true, and I never express an opinion about guilt or innocence. What you can't do is published material intended to either incite people against the defendant or to motivate people to feel sympathy for the defendant. If you know something about a case, you certainly can't publish what you know. You should be going to the police and making a statement. 
You can't publish anything about a person's criminal history or their criminal past because these are almost never taken into account when considering a person's guilt or innocence. You can't publish information about jurors. You can't interview witnesses or potential witnesses and publish the things they have to say. You can see how any of these things, if they got out there and went viral, could potentially interfere with justice. The risk is at its greatest when there's a jury involved in the case. Judges and magistrates in Australia are professional, experienced judicial officers who are most unlikely indeed to be influenced by anything they read in the media. Juries, however, are normal people with normal failings. When a juror is sworn, they swear or affirm to try the charges against the defendant and decide them according to the evidence, not according to what they read in social media or see on TV. When the jury has been sworn in, before the start of the trial, the judge inevitably gives them a warning not to go looking at social media or media regarding the case. And if a juror becomes aware that another juror has done so, they're required to report it to the bailiff and the jury will be dismissed. We have a whole new trial. Still, it would be naive to believe no juror ever goes on Facebook. And for large notorious trials, it may be impossible to even find jurors who have not seen some sort of reporting on the offence. For this reason, because jurors are normal citizens and not infallible, the sub rule attempts to stop people publishing that sort of prejudicial material in the first place. So there you have it. You're entitled to your opinion about any matter before the courts, but you take a grave risk if you publish anything, even on Facebook, until the matter has been dealt with finally by the courts. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, this is the first of my video explainers after a number of my written ones have been really well received. Um, please understand that my effort here is to advise people about uh, the law and how the law stands, but this is not legal advice to you personally. And um, if for some reason you're running into some trouble with sub uh, you need to get yourself along to a firm of lawyers and get some advice that's specific to you. If you're watching this and you'd like some other aspect of the law explained in what I hope are simple and understandable terms, uh, feel free to email me at anthony.marinac at gmail.com.